Hey guys, welcome back. So we showed you how we fish and showed you us catching a couple of fish. Now we're going to prepare and cook a fish. Now, a couple things I'll tell you. This one bluegill really isn't a meal. You want to have two or three of these per person typically. If you are, that sound is just the oil heating up, buddy. If you are making a real meal, but we only caught one today and I still want to show you. Another thing I'll mention is everybody has a different way of doing this, just like everybody has a different way of fishing. A lot of people will say that to fillet a bluegill is kind of a waste because you lose a lot of meat. For me, in Connecticut, these things are overrunning pretty much every lake. They're very prevalent, so I don't really find it to be super wasteful. Uh, I think you should basically, if you get out there and fish, you should pretty much do this however you want. So go ahead and show the fish again. So what I do is you just make a cut right there, okay? Sharp, as sharp a knife as you can, you can manage. Okay, and you cut along the backbone right here, okay? And then try to keep the tip of the knife as close to the, what's that, the pectoral fin, I guess? Sure. Okay, and there's your first fillet. So that actually came out pretty decently. Warning, do not wa do not watch this part if you do not like blood. Yeah, there's always going to be a little bit of blood involved. That's prepping, prepping meat. So, cut again, kind of the same way. This, the, this side is always a little tougher, I find, for some reason. Are you watching the thing? So again, you're, you want to get as much meat as you can, so you're cutting as close to each fin as you can with the knife pointed down a little bit. Okay. So that you don't cut anyone? And there's two. So Now normally I'd want to have pliers, but I don't have my pliers, so I'm going to use a fork. You're going to stick like that. And now you want to take it off of the skin. Okay, so you're going to go like this. Whoop. You mean scales? With a skin, which has the scales on it. Well, yeah. Okay, so take the skin off. And you cut off the rib cage, and this is the bit of meat that a lot of people again will say, "Well, you could eat that." And you can, but for me, it's not that much, and I just like the fillet so much better. So that's a boneless, skinless fillet. Okay. You do it again on this side, and you just normally I would work the skin down instead of the way I'm doing it, but again, I don't have my pliers up here. I should have just grabbed them. I didn't, so that's on me. But. I could grab them for you. No, we're already most of the way there. So you just kind of, you know, put a little bit of down pressure on the knife so that you don't lose any meat to the skin. And you can see that, I mean, it's coming off pretty clean. Yeah, some pretty clean skin. See? So that looks good. No meat on there. Honey. Okay. Close up of this. Okay, that's enough. So show the this so you're gonna cut again along the rib cage to get rid of that his fingers look like he was just in the murder skin <laughs> oops okay so you're getting rid of all of that and that leaves you with these two this is pretty nice for a bluegill two nice boneless skinless fillets so you're gonna one rinse them off each of us. one for each of us so you're gonna rinse them off okay and we don't have any friends get rid of the blood we have friends they're just not here okay. we're forever alone Okay, so coming over here. I am. What do we have? We have flour. Normally, I would use breadcrumbs, but I ran out of breadcrumbs. You, you can back that up, but you don't have to be so close to the flour. And I've got uh, shake and bake. So we're gonna try this with some shake and bake, which is basically breadcrumbs anyway. So I, I start by rolling the the fillets in the flour, and a lot of times I'll use two plates, but since we only have two, whatever. And I use too much, so unfortunately, we're also wasting a little bit of material, but that's okay, or ingredients. After you've rolled it in the flour, give it an egg wash. Okay, that's this is disgusting. just- disgusting. This is, you can't even see it, buddy. This is just one scrambled egg, okay? And then you're gonna put it in the breadcrumbs, okay? And again, I normally will use a, an Italian seasoned or a garlic and herb breadcrumb, but I had all I had today was shake and bake, so that's what I'm using. Okay, and same thing with the other one. So that's kind of like, if you were making chicken tenders, that would be like the skin of the tender, kind of. Yeah, it's not too dissimilar. So, again, egg wash into the breadcrumbs. Whoops, I spilled some. This can be messy, but, uh, you know, you clean it when you're done. And... Why I'm not talking much is because I'm not an expert at this. I can fish, but I can't fly fish. 
Okay, so you want to, you know, Cut have fish. nice hot oil. I think it's going to be hot enough at this point. It should bubble a little bit. Yeah, see how it's bubbling? That's perfect. And this is just vegetable oil, basic vegetable oil. Uh, you could use peanut oil. That's what I use when I use my deep fryer, but I don't get the deep fryer going unless I have a lot of fish and a lot of people. Not that it's difficult, but it's just kind of a pain. So, that is a really nice view of fish. Display. These do not, these do not take very long. Uh, not more than a couple minutes a side. You want them obviously nice and golden brown and cooked through. Fish, fish typically you want to be at about 140 degrees. So, let's see. And you can see I just kind of put just enough oil. There we go, look at that, how brown, nice and brown oh, those are. that looks good. Okay. Again, paper plates, a little wasteful. I don't, often don't use paper plates, but today I'm just kind of trying to get this done. And I actually reuse that paper plate. Hmm. It was used for something else ordinarily. I don't recommend that, but it is what it is. What's that? Oh, I know what that's from. I think. So anyways, so we'll let these cook another minute, and really, like I said, I mean, it, it doesn't take long in hot oil. I don't know what t degree you want the oil to be at. Usually what I'll do is, I mean, for my oven, I got it between six and seven, medium-high heat. Watch your hands by the oil bin. Um, you know, uh, probably around 170, 180 degree oil, something like that, I think. But if you take a little bit of water and splash it into the oil, it should bubble up. Just be very careful though, uh, no matter what, when you're working with oil, hot oil, it can splatter and you don't want to get this on your skin. You also don't want the oil hitting the burner because that'll smoke you out pretty bad. I've had that happen before. Um, so let's check the underside. This is good, okay? So we're gonna shut the heat off. We're gonna put these right here, okay? I always like to set them on some paper towels to drain a little bit of excess oil. Okay, so there's one. And this really isn't, I mean, two, two, like if two fish, if you had four of these, that's plenty of food, especially if you're supplementing that with some rice and some vegetables or something like that. That's what I'll typically do for a full on meal. So, what I'll do is we got a little bit of ketchup. Okay. We don't need that much because no, well, I'm not each person. Put, and I, I'm, I'm, I like barbecue sauce, so I'm going to do a little bit of barbecue sauce. Get on there. Cannot see. Hmm? No. I'm getting impatient, so I'm just going to. Yeah, so I want fish. Up <laughs> it up, I want to eat. <laughs> I don't want too much of this to come out either. Okay, good enough. So I'm making a huge mess and probably not doing this the best way, but anyway, that is really it. So here it is. Here's the inside. You can see it's nice and flaky and can we put white. That separate one on a plate for me, please. No, I thought we can't just share a plate. No. All right, let me see how this is. Mmm. Oh my god. <laughs> this is mine now. I clean them. So apparently Tommy can't share a plate with me, so here we go. He gets his own plate with his own fish. And you want me to vi film you eating your piece of fish? Okay. So I'm going to take over a moment. Might be a little hot, so just... Take a small bite. Bluegill is literally my favorite type of fish. Is that pretty good? It's good mm -hmm. with that shake and bake coating. So what I used is uh, bluegill is my favorite fish too. Yeah, bluegill is really good. So I know. this is what I used for the again. I usually use a, a basic breadcrumb, but this is what I used. Okay. So hope you enjoyed that. Hope it was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you got anything to say, and uh, we'll we'll do something like this again. Bye.